So continuing on what I was saying um, last time, I'd like to talk about products, systems and um, design this time. Consumption, as I was explaining, is dependent on background technological systems. Um, and these systems uh, involve sunk costs, that is, huge investments in energy, time and labour. And the effect of these sunk costs is to make these systems essential. And this is done largely through possession. When we possess and enjoy something, we become committed to the system. Um, and sometimes this possession is quite psychological. It's aesthetic. I drink tea in the morning out of this lovely old cup. It doesn't have a saucer, but I really enjoy drinking tea out of it. So for me, tea drinking and the pleasure of tea drinking is associated with that cup. Uh, for a, a wealthy man, jumping into his Maserati in the morning and smelling the, the leather uh, of the seats and the roar of the engine as he starts the key and goes off to his office, that becomes uh, something that is closely identified with him and with driving. Whereas some poor guy, uh, maybe a, a cleaner in this guy's house or in his office, will jump into an old van and uh, that will be his uh, sense of place of movement through the world, through his life. He will identify with that van as being part of his world, part of his life. So um, one of the effects of a system, or if you like, the sunk cost of a particular system, like a road system, is possession. And, um, and choice becomes a way of asserting our, uh, our role as individuals within this field, uh, within this sort of system, if you like. The system is like rails, we can't go outside those. You know, so outside them, there live the crocodiles. We don't know what's outside there. But within the rails, we know there are cars and we can choose between them and depending upon our income. And um, uh, the wealthier we are, the more impressive we think our choices will be. But the sunk cost effect is this delusion that uh, our choice actually is significant. Now, it's significant to us personally, but how significant is it to the environment? This is the interesting question. It is significant in the sense that every car pollutes the environment. Every car adds its minute uh, weight to our environmental problems. That's absolutely true. But whether you choose a greener car than another greener car makes a, a, a fragmentary difference. And um, it's very important to remember this, that the aim of our efforts should be to change the system, not to uh, make individuals feel guilty about what they possess. We need to change these systems. We need to green them. And it's an iterative process uh, that involves everyone, not just designers even, even though designers play a very important role in this. Um, so through possession and use, we access services and uh, it, the services are provided to us by these systems. So um, what tends to happen with possession is that the, the system providing the service almost disappears. It becomes normal. It becomes uh, invisible to us. It's like this. Uh, we drink the coffee, we focus on the coffee. We think the coffee is wonderful because it is handpicked by a small commune in South America. And uh, we think, oh, wonderful coffee. Smell the, smell the coffee. Uh, every morning we drink our coffee. But the service that delivers it to us, which is causing so many problems, and I mentioned this last week, 500 billion of these being produced every year, uh, that that, um, uh, uh, that that delivery of this service is a big problem, but it's largely concealed from us. No cafe is going to tell us these are a problem. Some do. Some are very brave. Some individuals will say, these are a problem. We should stop using them. And there's a famous cafe in Perth now that says, uh, we refuse to sell coffee in these, which is fantastic. 
Businesses can make a difference, and so can designers. Individuals, less. Even though, for your own peace of mind, it's very important that you say no, that you, you say, I want to make a difference. Yeah? So do that, but recognize you're at the beginning of a war. You haven't won anything yet, all right? <laughs> so design, what about design? Design shapes these systems, products, and creates new products and improves old ones. Unfortunately, there's a sort of a, an economic rule that everyone needs to understand, that the more efficient, the more, uh, if you like, um, technological innovation and improvement we make to a particular product or system, on the whole, over time, the cheaper it gets, the lower the costs involved in making something. Uh, so this cup might have cost, in our money, a hundred years ago to make, you know, over a hundred dollars. Now we can make cups, uh, you know, for a fraction of that. But what that means is that the maker of this cup had a generous margin and became wealthy. Whereas the maker of uh, a similar cheaper, very cheap cup now, say one that might cost a dollar, they have to make a hundred thousand of those perhaps to make the kind of margins that the guy who made these uh, could could enjoy. So what tends to happen is as efficiency improves the delivery of a system through products, products prices tend to fall, the margins of making those prices tend to fall. And that that encourages the maker to deliver more stuff. So you end up uh, as a designer finding yourself um, producing more stuff for more people faster, which is not good for the environment. So the, if you like, the majority of design is locked in to this delivery of products and services to people, often things people don't really need, like these. And uh, But without these, the particular business model of Mr. Starbucks would fall over because that business model depends upon people uh, coming into his shop uh, taking uh, the coffee and going out so that the next person can come in. So instead of him having to wait for people to drink at a table and leave, he has the ability to make more coffees and then somebody else deal with the washing up or the waste. So uh, if you, you contrast that with Mr. Ikea, whose cafe uh, involves um, a model where you don't want people wandering around spilling coffee on lovely new furniture, uh, you can see the contrast that that system uh, where you help yourself to coffee and then you put your cup uh, back on a, a rack ready for washing, that in a sense prevents uh, people going outside. So design is very important because design and business model are connected very closely. Yeah. So um, design tends to shape the way we experience systems through products and the way they're delivered to us. Um, so um, businesses are involved in continuously recovering value from these lower prices. And there are different ways of doing this. One is, uh, and these are typical and nearly all of them are bad, you know, but this is how it works. Yeah. So first of all, you try and dominate the market. You increase volumes in your sector. You just churn out more stuff and you work out ways of people using your stuff more quickly. Take coffee pods. You know, it's wonderful. You take a, a $10 commodity coffee and you sell it for $100. Same volume, but in more boxes and in little containers that are a problem for the environment. Second one is you reduce the product lifespan by creating single-use stuff, such as, you know, those little throwaway sh shavers. You use them a couple of times, you throw them away. Somebody else's problem again. Um, you create variety, matching sets of things uh, through design so that people feel obliged to get something that goes with something they already have or something that they're interested in. And then you have technological innovation where you create novelty 
I can't show you the phone because I'm using it, but there is a perfect example. Uh, you create something perhaps from two different uh, technologies and you bring them together in a new way and you package this. And this is much more risky, but potentially much more uh, profitable. And then uh, you create a dependence on products. We mentioned the coffee pod. You know, there, um, once you have the machine, you have to keep buying the pods. And there are a lot of examples of this. You, you create a mini system within the supermarket system. And that mini system is branded by yourself, controlled by yourself. And so you generate more income from that. So um, the trouble with all this is not that people are trying to make money, not that people are selling you things, but the fact that they're designing these things without considering their whole life and their relationships. Design is about relationship. It's about you as the user, the system behind the product you're using and uh, the result of, uh, you know, in the environment. So what happens to it in the environment? So it's a relationship between a whole lot of things, the person, the technology, uh, the materials, the resources, if you like, that go into making it and uh, its impacts on the environment and also its impacts on other people. These, this relationship is complicated. This is why people go to design school. They try and learn about this, these relationships. Um, but most products now are what I call post-cautionary. Uh, the design is totally focused on the object and on it, the object in use and on the, on the actual transaction. You know, I sell you the coffee. I don't care what happens to that cup afterwards. That's not my problem. Yeah, that's that's the attitude that is embedded in our consumer world. You know, and that has to change. We have to start saying no. We have to start saying we have to have a better system, a system that doesn't damage the environment. We're in, we're in a sort of a war. It's a bit like um, smoking in the twenties when doctors would say, "Have another lucky. It's good for your throat." Yeah. We're in that. We can, we can tell people any rubbish about the effect of a product on the environment. There's nothing to stop us saying that a car has zero emissions because it's a hybrid. Um, it's nothing, there's nothing to stop us saying that an SUV is good for the environment. Nobody's going to jump up and down. Whereas if we said to you that these cigarettes don't cause cancer, uh, you might think, oh, that's, that's not true. Yeah, <laughs> so we're in a very interesting state because we're just starting to think about the environmental impacts of our products. And it's very important that we actually really understand this now and not wait till it's too late. Yeah, OK, so design has to be regenerative. It has to focus on relationships, long term relationships and the interaction between user product, system, and environment. So at the moment, design creates value in, in, in consumption at the expense of the environment. And systems um, and their, their impacts through products particularly are concealed by individual possession. We imagine that possessing something, uh, you know, is, is um, uh, somehow a special relationship and that nothing else matters. The trouble is it does. It really does. Um, most design is post-cautionary. It's not precautionary. It fails to engage with the environment at all. So the next thing is we now need to start talking about luxury, about uh, what makes us want things and how we get so hooked. And um, and we look at luxury because luxury is the, in a way, the gold star, the, the ultimate object of our desire. Thank you.